started. Perfect. And welcome, everybody, from uh, Terrell's, uh, <laughs> Terrell's world. <laughs> and God bless you. Uh, I'll, I'll start mine. Uh, hold on. There we go. Recording in progress. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Monday. If you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devoted husband, father, and Army veteran. And uh, today we have a returning guest. This is going to be part two to our our debate slash discussion last week on uh, flat versus globe and heliocentricity versus geocentricity. Um, yeah, Terrell, thank you so much for coming back. How you doing? Great. Thank you for having me. Stoked. Ready to go. Yeah, no problem. It looks like I'm having uh, no view. No one can see me. Uh, I guess it's going to be all right. Uh Let's see. Hide self view. Nope. Wow, that's kind of weird. Okay. All right, but go go ahead if you want to uh, start your uh, presentation or what, whatever you'd want to go with. It. Okay. So is it, is it going to be similar format? Ten minute, ten minute, and then question back and forth. Um, yeah. Oh, do you want to do a ten minute intro? Well, I mean, you're you know, it's your show, so uh, I want to know what the rules are. Well, it's kind of like, uh, you know, we're kind of just picking up where we left off last time. Okay. Um, but if you would like to do a full 10-minute intro, then then go ahead. Oh, it won't take that long. So this is, uh, first of all, this is my website. I'm Terrell at Terrell03.com. I'm a Bible scholar, wrote my book, The Mystery Explained, 2005, published it. This is a copy of my book, Mystery Explained, God's Wisdom Hidden in Plain Sight. I've, I, I'm from a family of ministers. We're military and we're mili and we're ministers, and that the family reunions, well, when my uncles were alive, <laughs> we had a lot of knockdown dragouts. I generally do not agree with uh, with their interpretations, but um, anyway, this is my website right here, and I'm conspiracy theorist, if you can call me that, if you want, just like Josh, cover 911 inside job, which scripture was my first grand conspiracy. I never anticipated going out of God's word and that after the book was written the Lord God uh, had me invest investigate 9-11 five years we're going to do a show on that March 30th coming up and then when that was done there's a PDF book that you can get and then uh, after that was completed then the Ellen and Comet was discovered and then 9-11 uh, backwards Ellen so my I'm a keyword analyst I did that with scripture did that with the Quran, did that with pretty much everything that I come in contact with. That's the way my mind works. And saw the patterns in scripture and then saw the patterns in the 9-11 documentation, most certainly an inside job, most certainly. We'll get into that on the next time. So uh, then this uh, biological weapon deal came out. Not going to go into that too much because I know this is on YouTube. So you can get all your information right here and over at Substack. Okay, that's like a lead in so I can segue over into this debate. So if you come down to my substack, you see there's all kinds of articles, including this one. The Earth is round, rotating sphere, like all the stars and the planets and the cosmos. This wasn't written just recently, September 22nd, near the, uh, the equinox. And uh, this topic came up and needed to be addressed, I thought. So you can check me out over here. The Earth is round, and we've got images of the planets, Mars, Mercury, and the Sun, they all are rotating spheres and, you know, just looking through telescopes. Time zones. This is my original presentation. Ties together is an image of the Pentagon building right there. And then this next one is, this is a picture of my desk, by the way. My mother, this is taken in the 40s. So anyway, this is the Earth that I live on in my universe. And this is our first debate that we had. So you can check this out. So this is kind of bringing you up to date of where we're at. Then Josh wanted to do a part two. And so I said, okay, so we're going to have a part two in the debate. And he says 28th, but we discussed that earlier. It was it was for the last day of February, you know, with the leap year. And so at this time, I took it upon myself to, I'm a little bit concerned because the terror cells are about to be activated. I'm like, is this really the important topic that we want to do? And so bars are going up in my windows. And this is the things that I'm, this is what I'm doing. And the Dragon Day movie, I think everybody should watch it. That's similar to what's about to happen now. 
Okay, so here we are, and we're doing our next debate. And there was a little, and if you look at our last debate, then you you were saying there were a different number of time zones. So I just put it in the search here. How many time zones are there in 24 regions? And there seems to be a debate about the number of time zones, but, you know, I pull up the charts, the maps. 24 time zones. And here's the map of the 24 time zones right here. You'll see that, like China, they have, like, they won't have one time for the whole place. So different countries do different things, but generally, the, here we are in the east coast right here. I'm in the central, so the sun came up over here, you know, and then hour later comes up here, hour later, hour later, hour later, all the way around the planet. I've got some pages pulled up for that. This little box thing, it gets right in my way. My apologies for that. Let me move it down here and see what happens. Okay, so I just pulled up some pages here. The My case was made in our last debate. There's really nothing that I really want to add to that. So I said, okay, let's pull up some pictures. I mean, let's pull up some times. Because for me, it seems like that the time zones, 24, and the Earth being 24,000 miles in circumference, and are turning at 1,000 miles per hour, that explains why the sun comes up. The sun's up here right now, where I'm at in the central time zone. It's not up where you are out in California, and it won't be for about two hours. And so I, I just put it in here, sunrise in New York City, 6.31 a.m. What you're going to find is I'm going to go all the way around the world. In all of these cities, the sun comes up between 6.30 and 7. So let's just let's go by the time zone. This is me here in Harrison, Arkansas, 6.43 a.m. And we go to Denver at 6.34 a.m. But you see the clock is an hour later. And San Francisco, 6.41 a.m. So at 6.41 a.m., where you're sitting is pretty much where the sun's going to come up. Has it come up yet? And then keep on going around Hawaii. The sun comes up at 6.52 a.m., their local time. And then Tokyo, a little bit different. So it depends on this time zone. If you're on the eastern side of the time zone or the western side of the time zone, it comes up a little bit later if you are further to the west, which would be, that's the way it should be, right? If it's around round planet. Then um, Beijing is between 6.30 and 7, also 6.48. And then we go to Ukraine, 6.42. Looking at the number, and see that gives you the number of daylight hours, and you see that's almost the same number. And it, it does vary depending on how far north you are on the planet because of the way the angle of the 23 and a half degrees. So in Rome, what time does the sun come up? 6.45 a.m. as because the earth is turning. And then United Kingdom, 6.46 a.m. So I'm just going around the world. And I used to live in Bermuda for a little while, I used to work overseas. 6.47 a.m. Those so were going around the earth. 6.47 a.m. And then here's a little video and it shows the Earth. See, this is a stationary satellite in space. It says the Earth is going around, then the Earth is frozen motionless. And you're seeing the angle going to 23 and a half degrees. And if you look at the dates, you see this is, well, you can't see very well. This is May, June, July, August, September. See the September and March is where you have the equinox. That's whenever this is pretty much straight up and down. And the solstice is on the either end whenever you're at 23 and a half degrees. So if, if the world is round and we're going around the sun and we're at the same 23 and a half degrees, then we're tipping t in the winter time. The northern hemisphere tips toward the sun. And on, the, on February, the I'm sorry, January 2nd is the perihelion when we're nearest the sun. And then whenever in July the 4th, we're the furthest distance away and we're tipped away from the sun in the northern hemisphere that's exactly what this shows and according to uh you know all the science that i understand so i just oh the, i was grabbing an image of the trying to get you the best time zone chart then a little factoid i got a picture from mount everest the tallest peak on the planet so how far do you think that you can see standing on the top of mount everest got an idea because in a flat earth, you'd be able to see pretty darn far. The answer is about 220 miles is from the highest point. That's how far the horizon is. 
and there is a way to determine the formula for determining how many miles an individual can see at higher levels is the square root of his altitude times 1.225 so on a clear day at a thousand feet a person with normal vision could see 39 miles see now this is true everywhere in the world every mountain doesn't matter where you go same rule because the earth has the same curvature all the way around so on a flat earth I would expect that there would be half the world would have the same sunset and sunrise and the other half on the other half that's if you have a pancake earth on the north and I'm trying to understand this I don't the, there's, there's different interpretations for the flat earth and I don't quite understand it yet but um if it's a coin thing that's flipping then half the earth would have the same sunrise and sunset and what, what you said earlier then you have a local sun and a local sun that and you'd have to have a local moon too right and so it moves in such a way that the the, the problem that I have with that is the this local sun would have to be extremely close to the earth to be able to give you these different times all around the world and what I know from uh, from science is that light travels 180 you know it's it takes eight minutes for the light from the earth from the sun to get to the earth we know that because of the magma wave uh, not magma that's inside the earth of the solar streams so you get a belch off the planet you get a wave that comes off causes a g1 g2 storm but there's a time differential so when the sun boom the eruption happens it takes two to three days traveling at you know high velocity and so knowing the speeds knowing the distance and then we get hit by the wave the bow shock the magnetosphere compresses so those are things that you can time that tells you the distance and it's 93 million miles away and so understanding of the science it's the way that I see things let's see what was this next one I'm almost I'm almost all the the distance yeah, you're, you're getting, well I think you're, getting, you're pretty close to, to 10 minutes but I'll, I'll, I'll let you uh, oh no 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 I'm, I'm at the end of my you see I'm at the end um, oh yeah yeah go ahead go ahead just saying okay so then this is just an image taken from the satellite that's going around the earth you know this the space station that's out there oh I didn't want this sound my apologies for that I can't hear the sound you're good okay so this is it's just a satellite you know going around the earth there's lots of satellites up there this is one that has a camera on it the space station and it's going around and it's showing it's, it's going around in similar fashion as I just did with the time zones so notice half of it it's light half of it's dark all the time there's no variance in that there's my home state of Florida where I used to live and so it's from my perspective in the round earth then um, it's pretty easy to see to see that okay so that's my view from the round earth perspective Perfect. and so then you know I turn the mic over to you brother no problem so uh, you're invoking NASA which you already told me you don't believe so uh, and that's also a fish eye lens and, and I and I'm not a thousand percent hundred percent convinced that that's even like a real uh, uh, video you know because we you know as you know NASA faking stuff all the time we talked about the moon landing is fake Lots of stuff they do. But anyway, so we'll just uh, we'll keep going. Um, so, guys, last debate was fun. It was awesome. Um, I had a good time with you, Terrell, and I appreciate you, uh, you know, coming out. And um, let's see. Uh, I want to try to – I want to try to share screen as well. So we have it side by side, which is pretty cool. That's probably why it looks weird. Um, okay. Share screen. see how do i share my screen nope sorry guys i just had it before he came on <laughs> um yeah i just shared screen before he came uh, i mean before we actually went live let's see um who's in your options i think it's three little dots three little dot thingy Hello, screen all right Show timers, hide self. There we go. Share. Sorry, guys. Apologize. Okay, so I think you guys can see this. Um, and I would like to full screen this picture. Oops. 
Du, 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 du. Can you see that pretty good, bro? Oh yeah. Okay. So this is uh this is biblical cosmology, okay? So the reason why I always go back to the Bible, um, because it is the only absolute truth that we have uh right now, especially if you're Christian. We know that the only absolute truth we have is the Bible. Okay, so uh, as you see in this uh, diagram, we have the sun and the moon and the stars in what's called a firmament. Last time I went over the firmament, um, the, the root word would be raka, which means to beat out, which means to spread out. The word rakia, it, it means solid, expanse, uh, base support for the waters above. So this is obviously going to be a small model. If you expanded that model a lot bigger than it would look like the, the, the modern day flat earth model. So I do believe that these gentlemen that put their model together, uh, got it from the Bible. You know, a lot of people maybe might not be believers, but the ideas all came there. It's all biblical. So in the Bible, we don't have a magma earth, you know, in the Bible, we have Sheol in the earth. That's what all the Hebrews believed. That's what it seems to uh, refer to when you are listening to uh, the underworld being down. Um, you hear like, you know, you're going to go down to the underworld. Jesus, he ascended to heaven, which means he went up to heaven, right? Up would be here and down would be in Sheol. If you have a globe, then at the spinning, rotating, orbiting, there's no up and there's no down. Up is wherever. So when Jesus ascended to heaven, all he has to do is go up to heaven. When he descended into the earth, he just has to go down to Sheol. This is a flat, stationary plane, non-rotating, non-orbiting. When Elijah went up to heaven, all he had to do was go up to heaven. And uh, you know what? Let me just start my timer, bro. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, I'll, I'll make sure I only do seven minutes. Uh, anyway, so uh, when... Uh, Elijah went up to heaven. He went up to heaven. No problem. When he when um, Enoch went up to heaven, all he has to do is go up to heaven. When Jesus uh, comes in Revelation, it says that that God he peels back the heaven like a scroll. One of the heavens is the firmament. So he peels the firmament back like a scroll. God's throne is above the firmament. Jesus comes in, and every eye will see. That is possible on our model. Is that possible on a globe? A fourth of the people would see. Not, uh, you know, not every eye will see. So we have that. Um, the firmament is in Genesis 1.8. It's called heaven. There's three heavens. One of the heavens is where the moon, sun, and the stars are located. The second heaven would be the firmament. And the third heaven would be where God's throne is located, which is above the firmament. Um, I could go ahead and go over some verses for you guys to for you to understand what I'm talking about, um, we have uh, Ezekiel 126. Let's do that real quick. Um, so Ezekiel 126 says that um, 126. I like to read it straight out of the Bible. So Ezekiel 126 says, and above the firmament, which is right here, that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. As the appearance of sapphire stone upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of an appearance of a man above upon it. So when he's talking about looking through the firmament, this is a vision. All visions come from God uh, when it comes to prophets. If you look up uh, Numbers 12, verses 4 through 8, he says, I come to uh, prophets in visions and in dreams, right? And then uh, he comes to Moses face to face, speaks to him face to face. So uh, Ezekiel is having a vision from God. God says that above the firmament is his throne. He says it right here in Ezekiel 26, 1. And also, if you go to Ezekiel 10, 1, then I looked and behold, in the firmament was above the head of the cherubims. There appeared over it were a sapphire stone as, as the appearance of likeness of a throne. So now you have above the firmament is God's throne. Okay, so that way I can explain that to you guys. There's also windows of heaven windows and doors to heaven you might think ah you're crazy josh why would you say such a crazy thing and then i would have to take you to genesis when um when the flood actually happened okay genesis 7 uh it says that 
the one of the um one of the things that happened is uh the fountains of the great deep were broken up okay so there's water underneath here right that's the great deep that's the abyss that's the abuso and then you have windows of heaven being open and it also rained for 40 days and 40 nights so god said he opened the windows of heaven he said it rained for 40 days and 40 nights and also the fountains of the great deep were broken so if you see this dome i believe connected to antarctica and you have a flood a worldwide flood, which we're going to debate that in a little bit. I, I want to ask you about that. All the water has to do is fill uh, the firmament and the highest mountain. It says 15 cubits is what the water ended up being over, of the, over the highest mountain on the earth, which is the entire earth. And, and that's what happened. So the whole entire earth was flooded. We had the windows of heaven open. We had it 40 days and 40 nights and the fountains of the great deep were broken. Now, what happened as well is he closed the windows of heaven. It says it stopped. But if you look at that word, it means closed. He closed the windows of heaven. He made it stop raining for 40 days and 40 nights. And he closed the fountains of the great deep. Okay, so this it's very easy to explain in biblical cosmology when it comes to, uh, you know, his, uh, you know, not his model, the, the, the modern day uh, cosmology. What they're going to tell you is that, uh, you know, they're either going to tell you it's a local flood, which I think that's what Terrell's going to tell us here because he told me that last time. Or they, they say, you know, I don't know how they explain a, a full uh, flood. And, and what they'll tell you most of the time with pastors is they're going to tell you, uh, well, it, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And, you know, the fountains of the great deep were broken. And and when you hear him say that the, the windows of heaven were open, all that means is that water, that's when it the first time it rained. But... I would have to argue the fact and say the windows of heaven were open. There's windows of in the firmament, which if you look up, uh, like I said last time, if you look up the book of Enoch, which we're allowed to bring any type of evidence here, the book of Enoch in, in uh, 89, it says that it's, it was enclosed and the water filled. You know, that's that's exactly what I describe here. Um, it's exactly what's described when you when you when you uh, read about the flood. Um, if you guys want to read about the flood, I would like to go over the flood. Definitely. But um, yeah, so if you guys look at that, it's it's pretty interesting. Amos 9, 6, it says that it's he who walks. Let's uh, read the actual verse so I don't um, so I don't screw that up. Um, Amos 9, 6. Let's go there. Amos 9, verse 6. Um, okay, so. So. So, yeah. Um, while well, I'm pulling that up real quick, I'll, uh, so, um, later. So we already kind of went over Amos nine, six before, but the reason why I want to actually go over it, uh, you know, right here is because you're able to see the, the, the biblical cosmology model. This was actually made from logos Bible study, right? So I think it's, um, uh, it's exactly what you would, if you were honest with the text, it's exactly what you would see if you, if you were honest with the text. Okay. So. Uh, it this is the NASB 2020. The reason why I go with this one is because it has fault. Uh, it says uh, founded his vaulted dome. I think that's the best translation because of what I tell you what it means. It says the one who builds his upper chambers in the heavens and has faulted his and has founded his vaulted dome. This right here, the firmament over the earth. Um, he who calls the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. Uh, if you look up the word face in geometry, it can never be the face of a spear. It's always the face of the earth. But what I want to show you guys is he walks in the upper chambers of heaven. He founded his vaulted dome, which is the firmament over the earth. And uh, if you look at what that word means, it means uh, binding to the earth. It's what binds heaven to the earth. So this is what binds heaven to the earth. Okay, so I, I don't know how far I am right now. Let me check and see. I'm sorry. I might have taken a little more time, uh, Terrell. Uh, yeah, seven minutes. Perfect. That'll just be what I go over for right now. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get a little a little deeper into it. So I could stop share if you want to you want to take back over. Okay. Stop share. All right. We can or we could talk like this. Whatever you want to do. It's up to you. Okay. So the last time then I pulled out images from the mystery explained and it says exactly what you're saying. Yes. So the, it shows the firmament, which is heaven. And you keep using yes. the term firmament whenever, depending on the translation that you use, that expanse or the firmament is in Genesis 1-8 called heaven. It so is it's, it's, heaven. No, it is heaven. And so 
it's it's uh i'm wondering why you keep running back to the first part of that verse but you whenever it says the firmament is heaven that's the equal sign that's when you, what I, I, I agree with you. It, yeah, it is heaven. The firmament is one of the heavens. Yeah, I think it's one of them. There's, there's a three tier in, in the Bible. If you look up Colossians um, second, it's a two twelve. It talks about Paul going to the third heaven, which is where God's throne is located. Yeah. So that's why I bring up that image. And and we I cover know that you're, I know that you. I know we covered that before. Yeah. But what what happens is you're saying that the heaven is 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 uh is not solid. But when you go through the Bible, it says that that oh, that it's very solid. It's a realm. It's, yeah, it's 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 more more real than this realm. Physically solid is what I mean. Yeah. Physically solid, like a dome over the earth. That's what it, they're describing there. Because it because if the heaven is holding back the waters from the waters, if you keep reading it in Genesis right there, it's holding back waters from the waters. The Hebrews all believe the cosmology I was showing you right there, which would be uh you know Moses, which would be um, Isaiah which would be Ezekiel, which would be Jesus, because Jesus doesn't come here and say, hey, Hebrews, you got the wrong cosmology, you know? He doesn't say that. He doesn't say the Greeks are correct, you know, the the, the ones that are opposing the God of the Bible, you know, the, they're the correct ones. So go ahead, bro. Okay. Is this about the right size for you to, to be is, able to visualize? Because uh, yes, sir. That's, I'm that's getting good. a little bit better, this Zoom, and this is too small. You're doing, you're doing great. You're doing great on so, Zoom. I like the way you present. So you can, is this kind of top to bottom on your screen? Okay, so I want everybody to be able to see. So this shows the new heaven and the new earth that starts Revelation 21. One, and the firmament that you're describing, which is heaven. So here's David on the earth. These are his prophets and these are his priests. These are water witnesses. These are spirit witnesses. David is a blood witness. So he's doing on the earth what the lamb is doing in heaven above. Here you have the body of Elijah. Here you have the body of Moses. So the body of Christ is talked about. That's us, members of Christ's body, throughout the Pauline epistles. And then the body of Moses, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, start at verse 1, baptize into Moses. And then we extrapolate from that, because we see the water witness, and we see the blood witness, that there is a body of Elijah, which is the angels. And you made reference, whoops, hold on just a second, I dropped my note sheet. ground and about Elijah going to heaven you mentioned that that's point number four that you made and I can, but ac but actually yeah, yeah but actually he just didn't just go he was taken he was taken in a chariot of fire and he, he was he was taken up and for me those are the the host people whatever you want to call them that have been here for a very 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 long time and he's been Working, Elijah's been working with them, and they're going to be part of the restoration of all things. So, but then you mentioned Enoch going up, but Enoch he went to be with God. So God is beyond this second realm. So he's the lucky one, if you will. He went all the way back to where we're gods in the infinite realm. But we see this: the first. That's why it's called the Most High. I agree. But so he's, he's physically the Most High. I think he's at the highest point of creation. That's what I believe. You know. And okay. I'll be above the firmament. Nobody's above. Uh, well, God well, okay. Jesus, you keep saying God. firmament, and that is confusing, because the firmament is heaven. Excuse me. Just pull up Genesis one, keep verse on, eight, me. and it's gonna. It first it mentions the firmament that's above the waters above the waters below, and then the firmament is heaven. So if the firmament's heaven, we can just call it heaven, can't we? That's what's right well, here. The firmament is gonna be one heaven. Okay, there's three heavens. That's why Paul speaks of three heavens. So the well, firmament. Is, is this is a, the Hebrew the, the the thing that I showed you is is from Logos Bible Software and that's a that's a, a Hebrew uh, it's from uh, Dr. Michael Heiser which he's not a flat earther but he's honest with the text and he said that this is exactly the three tier that they believed if you read the Bible the entire Bible and you see this that's exactly what it physically would look like that's what it that's what all the words are describing the the firmament is not just heaven it's one of the heavens okay that there's three heavens that's why paul says i went to the third heaven it, and right. jesus is we not went through in that the, we went through that jesus last time in, jesus is never ever ever mentioned in the bible not even one time being in the firmament okay it all the only thing that's that's described to be in the firmament are the moon sun and the stars genesis 14 through 19 so what god is saying is uh, that he placed the moon, sun, and the stars in the firmament, 
which is like inside, and then the firmament holds back the waters above. It's a solid. There's nothing that can hold back waters that's not solid, okay? So when it says that the firmament is heaven, all it's letting you know, in the beginning, I created the heavens and the earth, the Shemaim, which is where the moon, sun, and the stars are located and where God's throne is located. In between God's throne and the earth is what's called a firmament, okay? That's what is solid, and, I, and I'm not trying to... Uh, deceive anybody. Um, I'm, I'm just saying that that's exactly what it is. If you're looking up the NASB, you should look up Amos 9.6 and find out it says vaulted dome, but go ahead. Oh. And it does say it's heaven. That That is true, but heaven can, is also where the moon, sun, and the stars are located. You, you know that, that, that they're referring well, to I'm one of the heavens as being that too, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm letting you give your side, and I just want to give my side because this Please, expanse... Tell me what the firmament is or the expanse. What is the expanse? Well, God says what it is right here. He said, um, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. So the waters okay. above and the waters below is what we're talking about. Okay. So let it separate the waters from the waters. So you have the waters that become the heavens and you have the waters that become the earth. And God made the expanse or the firmament, if you're doing the King James and the translation, separated Firm. the waters that were below the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse and it was so and god called the expanse or the firmament heaven so i'm calling the expanse heaven okay? i'm not calling it firmament i'm not i'm not adding to or taking away from what god's word says it's called heaven and that's what's in my diagram heaven then you can see david's below and then you see the lamb of god which is in heaven my father who art in heaven is in heaven isn't he i mean he's my father who art in heaven that's what Christ names his father, except for that's heaven of Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is the other heaven. Okay, now, whenever we go to this, because I have exception, when you're going to Paul and talk about three heavens, I understand what you're talking about. But let's talk, let's look at what God's word says in 1 Kings 8, 26 and 27. Let's just look, let's just look what it says. It says, then, then God of Israel, let your words um, please be confirmed, which you have spoken to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. Heaven and the highest heaven. So according to Solomon and David, there's a heaven, which is heaven of Genesis 1.8, and there's a highest heaven of Genesis 1.1. Now that's the two heavens that this is referred to in these verses right here. God is right here. God indeed dwell on the earth. There's heaven of Genesis 1, 8, and heaven of, and that's exactly, exactly what my diagram shows. Okay. There's a heaven right here. See, it's heaven. And there's a heaven right here. And this is the, up here where you see Christ Jesus. And we're seated in the heavenly places with Christ in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 started 4, right? We're seated with him, with Christ in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So these are these heavenly places. See this highest heaven? In heaven, that's directly out of God's word. It directly out of God's word. Beyond that, beyond that is the is there's a there's a veil here, and this is three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, in God, heaven, and earth. God, heaven, and earth. And so this heavens, heaven, and earth right here is earth of Genesis one one. Open up in tabernacle form. So my diagrams begin very simply overlapping circles and then they get more complicated and this is the near the end of the book whenever you say all these put together say so, go, so you go ahead let's go to psalms 19 1 okay so this is separating the heavens from the firmament okay this is what it says and it's also if you deny the firmament which you're not denying but people do deny it you're actually denying the handiwork of god it says psalms 19 1 the heavens declare the glory of god the heavens being where the moon, sun, and the stars are located, which people love looking at and worshiping, and also where God's throne is located. That's the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So the firmament is separated in this verse, okay? Um, there's also still waters above the heavens. In your model, there's no waters above the heavens. But if you go to Psalms 140, verse 8, he says, praise ye, he's talking about praise ye the moon and sun and the stars, praise ye angels, praise ye waters that be above the heavens. 
So even David is saying there's still water above the heavens. When you separate water from water uh, on, on a physical creation, which God did, that's what he's speaking of. He's not speaking of something spiritual. You have to have a solid, something solid to separate water from water, right? So that's what they believed back then, the Hebrews believed. And I still believe it now because I'm not going to be deceived by the new cosmology because it's coming from atheists and it's, it's a totally inverted from what God says. So when you see the word firmament used, okay, separate water from water. Firmament, it, they're using it. Uh, God placed the moon, sun, and the stars in the firmament. It, it, and I already showed you the last time when it talks about the firmament being sky, in, in, in some in, in different verses. Also, if you look up the actual word, you said that it is an expanse. It, that, that's the word that people use now when they compromise for science. But expanse, flat as base support, firmament, a vault of heaven supporting waters above. So it's still supporting waters according to, like I said, if you look up what rakia means, and it also says expanse, but it, it, in parentheses, flat as base support, that means that it's still supporting water. Extended surface, solid. OK, considered by Hebrews as solid and supporting waters above. When I tell you that it's because Rakia, even though you're trying to place it and be, have it become a, a heaven, um, where is God's throne located to you, Terrell? Like, where do you think God's throne is located? How far away? Because on your model, God would have to be outside of the universes and him be trillions upon trillions upon trillions of millions upon millions of light years away. But if you look up. Isaiah 40, 22, it is he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. The way he sits upon that is because there is actually a firmament beneath him, right? I want to know how far away you think that God is located because he's actually looking at us like grasshoppers when it comes to Isaiah 40, 22. And he's, and he's also, the earth is his footstool. That doesn't work if it is the whole okay, universe. Okay, you're going to have to, you're throwing a lot out there. You're going to have to slow down, yeah, brother, ahead. just a little bit. Okay, go ahead. There's a lot of things that I... Uh, that I would like to address. First of I'm all, no, 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 that's, that's okay. Um, the first thing, oh yeah, we need to go back over here. Oh, I'm sorry, that's my wrong browser. That's the one that I'm no, not no accustomed to working with. Okay, because if we just go to John 118, John 118, read what it says. No one has seen God at any time. God, the only son, who is in the arms of the Father, has explained him. No one's seen God at any time, because heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain him, because God is infinite. Okay, so where is God? This is explained in my, in my and it's difficult to explain, because God is, Christ is at the right hand of God, right? He's been raised above all the heavens, Ephesians 4, 8. He's been raised above all the heavens, and seated, or standing, depending on, at his right hand. Okay, so back over here, then I'm going to show you. It's, and again, this is explained in more detail in the Mystery Explained. This is God right here. This is God seated in Christ Jesus in the highest heaven. But he's there, but he's not there, but he is there. Now, here's the deal. There's a first veil. See the first veil right here? First veil. There's a second veil right here. This is set up exactly like the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. Now, God is infinite. God is in the infinite realm. It contains him. Okay, so there's a body of God, there's a body of Christ, and there's a body of Adam, these three realms. But this second veil right here is wrapped right around God's throne. So that Christ is at his right hand. And I know that it's kind of like a typewriter, you know, the old style typewriters with a typewriter ribbon. The way that it comes out of the spool and it goes around and then it goes. So this second veil is wrapped right around his throne. So everything on the other side of the second realm um, of the second veil is infinite. Earth and heaven, heaven and earth are, are finite. They're created. Genesis 1.1. They're both created. So the heaven is way much larger than the earth. So Mike, where Michael's fighting the archangel, those hosts are almost infinite. Each host is almost infinite. Th those in the earth are finite. So that's what Christ is saying when he says that John the Baptist is the greatest born of women. But he that's least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him. He that's least in the kingdom of heaven up here is Peter, but he's still almost infinite. So God is giving a lesson that everybody's going to understand in the future. Don't understand it now because John the Baptist, he is testifying as the son of God. Little less. Luke 3, uh, 3 38, Adam. He is testifying and walking just like Elijah, 
for Adam, just like Abraham, just like David. He is one of the two olive trees from Zechariah 4, start at verse 11. So whenever Abraham and Sarah were walking the earth, that's Adam and Eve. I know it sounds crazy. David and Bathsheba. David is looking over into the bath of Bathsheba. That's the heavens, because Elijah represents all the angels. That's why he never saw death, because the angels don't. And um, Elijah, or David, is looking over into the bath and seeing Bathsheba. That's Eve. Okay, so the two witnesses come together sometimes. Sometimes they come singularity. They come single, like Noah. That's a skin for Eve. Moses, that's a skin for Eve. She comes again and again. Sometimes they come together. The two witnesses at the end of the age, Revelation 11, Adam and Eve. But they have the same powers as Elijah and Moses because Elijah and Moses are Adam and Eve. So if you look at the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew, the, uh, Matthew 17, you see Christ in the middle, the Lord God, and you see Elijah on one side, and you see Moses on the other. That is the last of the first. The first is the Lord God who made them in the garden, Adam and Eve. The, the, that's the first. The last is Elijah and Moses. And their bodies, they're all baptized in the body of Moses. They stand on the sea of glass. There's an invisible sea on the other side. So all of these things work together with the, with the correct interpretation of God's word. That's one of the points that I wanted to make is that you're given this biblical cosmology and it's based upon an interpretation. So this is your interpretation of God's word. Everybody should have their own interpretation. I've got mine, you've got yours, but it is an interpretation. So yeah, it's, it's basically what I do with the Bible is I just read it word for word. And then they came up with a model when you read it word for word. And that's the model they came up with when I was speaking, when I was telling you. So where would hell be located in your, in your model? Inside, and, and not your, not your, not your mystery explained model. I'm talking about on our physical uh, Earth right now. Where would hell be located in our physical? Not this, not not what you're showing me here. What, in, what, what, what inside the Earth, there's actually pictures of it in the mystery explained. Inside the Earth, you do so, believe it's in the Earth. Absolutely. Say so there's a paradise okay. side wow. and there's a Hades okay. side, and there's I, a, I believe that that's that's in the New Testament. I definitely agree with that. That's going to be in the and, Lazarus, and, um, and they can see each other across this great yes. chasm. Yes. Okay, yeah, so agree. those are three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. It's just they're inverted. So well, the... Well, how come you believe the, the Bible in that sense, but you don't believe it when it comes to the cosmology, you know? Oh, I, I, I absolutely do. I, I just would never invoke that, there's, that hell is in the earth. Number one, you can't lump me in with all scientists. I'm not typical scientists. Number two, um, all scientists don't believe the same thing any more than Christians do. So we're individuals. You have your inter individual interpretation. I've got my in interpretation. But God's word says exactly what I'm showing you. I'm interpreting okay. the same verses in a different way than you are. When you when you go from science to to spiritual, like you like you're doing right now, like can you give me one uh, one or two verses that would support a heliocentric or geocentric? I mean, not he geocentric, a heliocentric, or what you what you explained, like gravity, or can you explain? All these different things you're explaining. Is there any verses that you can show me biblically that that invoke the cosmology that you showed me in the beginning of the of you know in the beginning where it's a, a globe spinning orbiting uh, around a sun? Is there any verses in the Bible whatsoever you could give me that would support your model? I don't think so, but that's not what the Bible's for. So that's misapplication. Okay. We have we have telescopes. Well, so there's many okay. ways to Hold prove on. that, but I'm uh, okay. walking into God's word that is great for reproof. It's great for doctrine. It's great for, it's a living document. It's great for many things, but that's not what the I, Bible is for in my view. So whenever I gave my presentation, okay. I didn't even go to the Bible. That. Yeah. So yeah, you didn't you, go to the Bible whatsoever. And every time I would go back to the Bible, I was hearing you say, which is fine because I love you as a brother. And, and you said, it, since you want to keep going back to the word, which that's the only place that means you could go back to. Because if we keep going to people that are atheists, you can, you can only have one master, right? One master, which means that the people that are atheists, even though they're not in the temple worshiping Satan or Baphomet, as you know, they're still worshiping Satan because you can only have one master. The, the master that me and you worship is different than the master that, that, that these scientists that have come up with all these theories, you know, all of them. Uh, Copernicus, uh, he, they said he was a priest. You know, like, I mean, if I could go through all these guys and, and show you that they're not Christians worshiping Yahweh, they're 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 worshiping the sun, they're worshiping uh, you know Jesuit, they're Freemason, all these things, even evolution. You know, you, I think you invoked evolution, 
I, I don't understand because when you read the Bible and you say there's no science to it, if you read Genesis, what does it start out with? That, that would be cosmology, the study of the heavens. It starts out with cosmology as soon as you read it. And then taxonomy happens when Adam starts naming them. Biology happens when God creates them. Uh, all these different sciences are happening. And for when people try to tell me that it's not a science book, Dude, it, dude, Jesus was there when 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 the earth was created. First uh, Colossians fifteen, for it to not be important, the creation story. That's like that's the reason why we could walk on the ground, the reason why we can eat, the reason why we could do all these different things. Also, uh, you know, uh, Genesis three thirteen is when the first mention of the Messiah. There's all these different things in Genesis that are important. I know I know that you would invoke that, but I don't understand how people say that it's not a science book when it's actually explaining how the heavens and earth were created. That would be what astrophysicists dream if they would just read the Bible and then they would know exactly how it was created and, and when it was created and everything, you know? That's not what I said. I know. That's how you're but... interpreting what I'm saying. I'm saying, oh, obviously, the, the Bible says exactly what creation is saying. So it does speak about the creation. The first thing that happens is the earth is created. I'm not saying that. I'm interpreting Genesis 1 very differently than you are. So... Yeah, and that's fine. Do I want to go to the Bible to prove the anatomy of planets and stars? No. Do I want to do it for establishing the difference between um, kingdom doctrine that Christ taught and grace doctrine that Paul taught? Yes. Do I want to show the difference between the law and the prophets for Israel and the gospel of the kingdom for for um, the kingdom disciples like Peter, John, and James and our gospel of the grace of God? Yes. That's what the Bible's for in my view. But to prove the anatomy of the planet, then I use observation and all the tools at my disposal, which includes telescopes. I don't need NASA. That's the point that you made. NASA faking images. I don't need NASA to tell me. Not not supposed. I showed you what's coming from the space station. But there's, there's there's plenty of no. There's plenty of amateur astronomers that have telescopes that look at Jupiter and look at all the planets. They're rotating spheres. Every single one of them. Well, no, there's no there's no rotation that they ever see. Uh, I can, oh, absolutely are. That's what it, when, when you're just looking through a telescope. You can, you can see Pluto with a backyard telescope. You can see Jupiter. Yeah, okay. okay, they're they're so, kind of small until you get an observatory class telescope, but they're all seeing the same thing. So if there's this giant conspiracy, then there's millions, literally, of amateur people that have telescopes that look through and they're seeing the same things. They're not seeing this gigantic difference, and so I'm not saying, you know, that I should take even their word for it, absolutely, but I can gather evidence. I'm a researcher. I go and gather the evidence, and for me, everything is explained. The shadows on the planet, the way the sun comes up and goes down, for me, it's round, and you've got a different model, and I appreciate it. I want to learn more about it, but yeah, for, so, so the, the, I have six points written here, and NASA faking images. That is a gigantic conspiracy. In other words, you know better than the scientists of the whole globe, and we're and we're talking about enemies: China versus the United States. They're looking through the, the, they're looking through the yeah. same telescopes. They're drawing the same conclusions, even though they hate each other. Okay, then okay. biblical cosmology. That's everybody's interpretation of God's word. Then the firmament is heaven. We already covered that. And Elijah went in a chariot of fire. God's throne. I showed you that. And then oh, you asked me about the world war, worldwide flood. So. Whenever Elijah got ready to go across the um, Jordan River, then he smacked the banks and the water piled up on both sides. Literally says, if you look at the, the Hebrew, it literally says the water piled up on the other side. He Then he crosses and then the water comes back together again. So it's very easy for God, God can do anything, to pile up the water on the land. That's why Moses never made it out of the, land, the, the promised land. He went to the what northwestern edge of it and couldn't go any further because it was a local flood that explains why there's kangaroos in australia because moses whenever the ark landed he did not travel to australia he did not travel to australia to put back the kangaroos and that, so that can there's you, an assortment can you, biblically, can you show me biblically real quick uh, while, I'm, while i'm trying to share the screen can you show me biblically the flood where, where you think it's a local flood i want to show I want, I want you to show me biblical evidence of that not not anything scientific anything like that show me what you mean biblically when you say that it's a local flood i would love to hear that because i don't understand it at all like you, like you don't okay understand my cosmology. okay so it's explained i don't need to pull anything up but you're talking about the term er erits in the genesis 1 1 in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth okay erits it's right there 
And as you go down Genesis 1, the term is reused over and over and over again to mean, first of all, the entire universe, and then the local arm of the, depending on how you interpret, the Sagittarian arm that we're in, the, our planet, and then our local Earth. So Eretz is the Earth, our literal spinning ball, same word used for the entire universe. But by the time you get to Genesis 2 and you see Genesis 2, 4, then you see in that the Lord God is going to work. God's working Genesis 1. He rests in Genesis 2, 1 through 3. And then in Genesis 4, then you start the, ge the generations part. And when the Lord God is working, now he's working on this local planet. Eretz is the same term being used, but it means the land of the garden. The land of the garden. So this promised land, the land of the garden, is the land that's being dealt with from that moment forward. So the, the population that went out in the land, Eretz, same thing. Okay, so then the bad seed, corrupted the bad seed, and the Lord God had to deal with it. And whenever he did, then he had to wipe them out. Did not kill the Aborigines in Australia. Didn't kill the American Indians. Didn't kill, I mean, there's, there's peoples that have been here for a long, long, long time. But according, the, to, the, the, according to who? According to the scientists. Okay, there we go. So, all right, so I would like, okay, so I would like to go over uh, what you just talked about and, and what the Bible actually says because I know that you, what, what happens is, uh, what happens is, we're switching back from science to biblical, science to biblical, explaining something that's a biblical uh, narrative. Like the biblical narrative is the flood. So if I read Genesis 7, I'm going to read it to you guys. And the Lord said unto Noah, come thou with all the house into the ark, for thee I have seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee, every clean beast, okay, guys, um, by sevens, the male and female um, of the beast and and that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also, the air by sevens, the male and female, to keep seven alive upon the face of the earth. Uh, yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every single su living substance that I have made. This is God speaking to, I'm going to tell you guys before I finish this. God is speaking to Moses and keep telling him this story. There's no way that there's that it, that Noah's telling uh, Moses the story, okay? We don't speak to the dead. God, this is a first-hand account from God. Listen to the language when I'm, when I'm talking about this. He says, every living substance that I have made, I will destroy off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all the Lord commanded. And Noah has 600 years old, and the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his, and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts, of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, of everything that creepeth upon the earth. Everything the, uh, there went in two and, and, and two unto Noah into the ark and the male and female and God had commanded Noah and it came to pass after seven days, the waters of the flood were upon the earth and in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, the seventh day of the month, the same day with all the mountains, all the fountains of the great deep broken up. The windows of heaven were open, the windows in the firmament, like I showed you guys, and the rain was upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth and sons of Noah and Noah's wives and three wives and the sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind, the same way that God said I created every beast after its kind in Genesis uh, early on, he says that every beast after his kind and all the cattle with their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth after his kind, every fowl after his kind and every bird after his sort. And they went into the ark. Two of the uh, two of all flesh were in, in the breath of life. And they went in, went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded. And the Lord shut him in. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all high hills that were under the whole earth, okay, were covered. All of them, okay, 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail and the mountains were covered. So every single mountain on the entire earth no, was covered. In the land. So you're well, translating okay. Eretz as on. earth, and I'm translating as land, and it makes perfect sense. Okay, so, well, if you go into the New Testament, uh, it talks about it in Hebrews. It's, it talks about the whole earth being flooded. 
Uh, also, uh, I'd have to go to those verses, but all, and it says, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl, of cattle, of beast, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man. Okay, guys, every man. This is God speaking to Mo. I mean, to Moses, telling him this story. This is not Moses making his own story up. Okay, and it says, "And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the earth, both man and cattle, the creeping things, the fowl of the earth, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they were with him, and and those that were, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth, hundred and fifty days." Okay, guys, first of all, we got to understand something. This is an uh, an immense judgment upon the earth because in Genesis 6, if you go to Genesis 6, I don't want to take a bunch of time up, but we're actually reading out of the word, so this should be okay with you. Um, Genesis 6, it talks about the, the fallen angels coming down in Genesis 6 through 4. It says there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God, which are angels, came into the daughters of men, and they built children in them. The same became mighty, which were of old men of renown. When you read that verse, Genesis 6, 4, and you find out what was going on there, you understand why God would have to flood the entire earth. Because we have Nephilim, which is like, you know, if you have um, angels coming down, having sex with humans, women, and having and having Nephilim, which are giants. So now the DNA is, is messed up, right? So, And then it says that every thought was corrupt. Okay, every thought. That means every thought, right? Not doesn't mean some and they were violent and all these things were happening on the earth at that time that people need to understand what provoked the flood. But I'll let I'll let you go. But when I read that, guys, understand the language. Every, all, every, all. That's all you hear the whole time when you when you when you Genesis seven. But go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. Give me biblical proof of the flood. No, I'm not gonna give you, I'm, not, gonna, I'm gonna give you says. I'm gonna give you my reasoning. Because okay, please do. Okay. So when you whenever you translate the earth, every time you said earth, the whole earth, if you, as soon as you translate that into land and it's the local land of the garden, it all makes perfect sense. And it also explains everything in the world. Because there was no like I said earlier, there's no trips to Australia. There's a diversity of animals there that were if they were wiped out and they came off the ark, how did Noah get them back over there to Australia, across the ocean? He never went across the ocean. He was stayed in the land. The, the seed corrupted, her, your seed corrupted her seed from Genesis 3.15. That was right here in the land of the garden. Okay, So the animals, or, or the people, the Chinese people, are you going to tell me that the Chinese people and the Aborigine people and the American Indians all came from Noah. No, well, no, I they've been around for a lot longer than Noah. I can tell you this. I can tell you this. Do you know that the that the Hebrew or, or the actual Indians in America they actually said that that people came over in a boat to to North America. I'm talking about this is not from the flood, but and, and actually they they knew certain things that the the current people that claim to be Hebrews now. Uh, didn't have in their ceremony, so they actually had, to, and this uh, American Indians showed them part of their ceremony, and then they actually ex accepted them as Hebrews, okay? So what I want to tell you is this. we There's there's incredible things in the Bible, like, uh, for example, Jonah being in a fish for three days, uh, you know, Elijah raising people from the dead, uh, Jesus coming, you know, resurrecting after three days, uh, him being able to make people walk again, blind see, deaf hear, all these incredible things happen in the Bible, and I never question how God did it, you know what I mean, or how Elijah raised that person from the dead through God, or the Red Sea being parted. Science cannot explain any of this stuff, but what we have to do is understand that God is in control, and if you want to invoke science, why don't you, we know they said Pangea, that all of the, the, the um, all of the continents were together at one time, that's scientific, they say that. I don't believe science all the time, but think about it this way. This is just me telling you what could have happened. What if all of them were together before the flood and then the flood happened and all the fountains of the great deep were broken and then they spread apart? How do you know that that didn't happen? But God can do anything. I don't think he, you know a man could ever have all the animals come to the flood either. God had to be the one leading the charge and God can do miracles. God can do anything. So you say that, oh, he had to drop them back off in, 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 uh, in Australia. That is... 
dude, that's not something that I have to like correlate in my brain because God is the one that did it. So I, that's, that's all I'm invoking. And I don't think that just because people tell you that uh, Indians are older than the Bible, are you saying that like American Indians are older than the Bible or just older than Noah? Way older, way older, older than the Bible. The Bible is relatively young. You know, okay, was, I'm was, talking about when I'm talking about. Is it older than like Adam and Eve? Are they older than Adam and Eve? Like all the American Indians and all the no. Chinese and all the people? No, of course not. Okay, but, that's what I mean. I'm sorry. So what, what? So did everybody that's on this earth come from Adam and Eve? Directly and indirectly, because some of them came from the waters of Genesis 120, just like the fish. Just like the beasts of the field, just like the birds of the air. Oh, now you're invoking evolution on the Bible. You're placing something that that the Bible does not say. Oh, came it, after its no, time. it doesn't. It doesn't say it according to your interpretation. It no, does no, say no, it no. according to my interpretation. Absolutely, if you does. read it word for word. It says everything came after its kind. You don't become monkey and become man. That doesn't happen in the Bible at, at all. God doesn't make us idiots. I'm not saying. So you're putting words in my mouth. I'm not saying no, men no, no. came from monkeys. God made monkeys, and absolutely, everything came from single cells out of the waters. Look at Genesis 1.20, oh teeming with yeah. waters. Okay, now look, you have people in Genesis 1.26 through 28, people. Okay, but Adam and Eve don't come along to chapter 2. Well, it takes millions of years for something to evolve, so it doesn't, I mean, are you saying that, that Adam was a million years old, or are you saying that Adam was only 700, like, like when he died, 700 and something? Let's look at Genesis 1. And there's people in Genesis 1, 26. There's people there. 26, 27, 28. And they're subduing. Yeah, they're sub... What are, we, what are we referring to here? Genesis 1, 26. And through 28. Yeah. Let us make man in our image. Right? Let us. Yeah, and who's he speaking to? God who is is speaking to God who was and God who is to come. All right. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, so how does oh. that invoke that? Okay, so those are people that are here, like the Chinese, like the American Indian, like the Aborigines. They've been here for a long, long time. Adam and Eve come along in Genesis 2. These are seventh-day people. They're sixth-day people and they're seventh-day people. They... The six-day people are RH positive exclusive, like the Chinese. They all are RH positive, all of them. Okay, so, ninety-nine okay point. To, I know. I understand. What American you're Indians are the know. same way. Aborigines are the same way. They have same features and characteristics, and they've been here a long time. The seventh-day people, you and me, gods from God's infinite realm, we're here for the purpose of judgment. They're not here for the purpose of judgment. They are the members of Adam's body in God's infinite realm on the day he was made. Other gods like Adam incarnated inside of him. That's right. us, Seventh Day People. It's all explained in my book. Okay, so we're Seventh Day People. We're descended from Adam's most recent incarnation, Genesis two seven. Well, actually, it's Genesis two uh, three twenty one when they were put in skins. That's Adam's most recent incarnation. Now that's where the lineage begins. We're part of that, but that is twelve thousand five hundred years old. The the uh, the oldest people that they're discovering in Africa. The Lucy, two and a half million years old. Now, these six-day people have been around a long, long, long time. The people that took Elijah up in the chariot of fire, they've been here a long, long, long time. There's reptilian races here. There's amphibious races here They that precede mammalians even being on the planet. you got dinosaurs. you got the extinction of dinosaurs in the earth. And you got a long history on our planet. But most recent is the seventh day people that are here for the purpose of judgment, Hebrews 9.27, because of our participation in the satanic rebellion. Now, the six day people that have been here, like whenever the Europeans came to America, they found the Indians. Okay? And they just pretty much obliterated the Indians. I'm part Indian, by the way. But that is what happened in Adam with the seventh day people, represented by the Europeans, and then the six day people that were already here. All of the Indians that were here are each positive. Just like the Chinese, just like the Aborigines. They have, so I've done all the research on this for decades, and I know what the truth is, but I share it as one interpretation, just my interpretation. But my interpretation explains everything from the science and everything from God's Word. And it says that the flood was local. It explains why there's kangaroos, and, and it, it, it didn't say that I will bring you all the animals. It told him to go get all the animals. But he would do that for all what's in the land. But there's way too many animals on the planet 
to fit into that arc if you're using every plant, every animal on the whole planet, elephants and it just wouldn't okay. giraffes so and. What about God's promise? You know, it says uh, Titus one two that God cannot lie. Uh, Hebrews six seventeen. Thus God determined how abundantly the heirs of the promise. Immediately his counsel confirmed by an oath, by two immutable things to which it is impossible for God to lie. So when God talks about, you know, him not flooding the earth again, you're saying that he's not going to flood the land again. Um, I don't understand because look, Genesis uh, 9 verses 8 through 17. Then God, this is God speaking, spoke to Noah and to his sons with him saying, and as for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you, with your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you. The birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, of all that go out with this ark, every beast on the earth. Thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off of the waters, uh, cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. Now there's so many floods that are destroying the land. Hurricane Katrina. There's floods in Israel. They just had one December 13th. Flooding Israel, okay? So never again shall I be a flood to destroy the earth. If you're going to place land there, then God would never have a flood again. We're constantly seeing flood after flood after flood happening. So this cannot be true if God said, I will never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. Okay, if you look up the word earth, it can mean land. Yes, I agree. But there, I believe he's speaking of the earth. Because there's, why would he even promise us that he has a rainbow telling us that he, there's going to be a covenant for me to never flood the earth again? He's talking about the whole entire earth. This is a giant judgment. And for you to say it's a local flood, why didn't he just tell uh, uh, Noah, hey, Noah, take your family and go to Mesopotamia because I'm about to flood the lands. He has to have him make an ark and do all this stuff. And, uh, and why did the, those people that are only there have flooded all those men, women, and children, and then all the other Chinese, Australians, and, and, and Native Americans, and all these other people that you said were alive, why do they get to live when they're not even worshiping Yahweh? Because they're members of a dispensation. They have direct dispensation with God Almighty. They are being fruitful and multiplying, according to Genesis 1.1. That's a household that is the entire population of the planet. But, see, so whenever you said God spoke to Moses, God never spoke to Moses. The Lord God did. It's well, really, I, it's, it's, it's invoke, important. I invoke it being, being God speaking to Moses. No, I know it that is you most, don't, well, it's the most, it's okay. Well, what he's happened? He's still not going to lie. Okay. Even well, if you do have your train of thought, he's still not going to lie Im, to Moses. It's important because Genesis 2, 1 through 3, God rests. God is resting. And where he is, day. and where he is resting, the seventh day is this day of the, that the priest works. The consecration work, and that's the Lord God who began working. So the Lord God is the one that is speaking with Moses. And God rested in the Lord God. That's an important thing to realize. God is in Christ reconciling the world to himself, right? Second Corinthians 5, start at six, uh, verse 19. What about the promise I just told you about? Please, please expand on that. I don't okay, so, that's, that's well, that promise, not be real then. This, is a dispen this is a dispensational issue. So Moses, um, Noah, and the righteous branch is what's being dealt with here. The righteous branch is what's being dealt with here. And that righteous branch is going to continue through the three sons of Noah. And that's where all of the civilization came from that branched out from Mesopotamia into Europe and that part of the world. You said the righteous branch? That's right. The righteous okay. branch that's going to righteous go down to... Branch, but Nimrod comes through Shem and Nimrod ends up trying to build the Tower of Babel and try to kill God. So what do you mean the righteous branch? How are they righteous? Because before, before whenever... Noah was in the world, then all the, the, the seed that was around them was corrupted. All of it was. God had to wipe, Lord God had to wipe it all out. So, but whenever um, Noah was brought through and his three sons, then the righteous branch, now the righteous branch isn't all three. Generations, that's what you mean. I'm sorry, you're talking about righteous Well, well righteous you go back through the, when you go, yeah, when you go back through the lineage, then when you get to Christ, when you go through David and you get to Christ, then that's the righteous branch. Okay, that's one branch. That doesn't mean that all the branches are righteous. Because, like you say, and there's different prophecies for different for Ham. He's going to be a servant. He's going to serve his brothers and, and um, all that. So that is the local land of Mesopotamia, the promised land that we would commonly know as Iraq. It's, all, it's from the Nile to the Euphrates, and it has... That's its location, and that was being dealt with, and that's the area that was flooded. 
That explains why the Chinese were not affected, and that explains why Australians weren't affected, and that explains why there's still kangaroos over there. They weren't killed and dragged out of the ark or anything like that. It explains the number of animals that, that Noah could possibly get into his ark, which would be local animals from that land right there. All makes sense to me. That's why you could bring seven of something. If you tried to grab two of every animal, there wouldn't be room on the ark. You wouldn't have room for have seven of this and that and the other. There was pl that's there was pl that's what, that's what you're doing. You're no, I'm in I'm interpreting the Bible differently than you. I believe mightily in the Almighty God, but you're interpreting it differently. And I believe my interpretation's right, and you do. And so you give yours, and I give mine, and and all these viewers and listeners they can decide. But notice notice what I'm doing though, um, guys. Uh, and, and it's okay, I understand you're interpreting it differently, but if you guys notice, what I'm doing is I'm reading the Bible word for word to you, and I'm not giving you an interpretation. All I'm telling you is what the Bible says, and I'm not twisting the words, and I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just telling you exactly what it says, and you might think I'm – when like when someone says to me like in the court of law, you say shall or you say all or every, that's, that's what it means, and God means everything he says, right? So – it says that this is a sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for sign for the covenant between me and the earth because he'll never flood the earth again. You know, if the reason why you have to do mental gymnastics that some people do when they're talking about a local flood is because it opposes science and it opposes the water ball that everybody's addicted to. But if you have the flat, uh, a plane with a with a dome over the top like I showed you with the Hebrew cosmology there's no problem with the water rising above the the highest mountain and for the water to be going down if it's 15 cubits above the highest mountain which is the, the whole entire earth there's no problem with that so what happens is uh Charles Lytle is the one that came up with this theory in the first place he's part of the Royal Society in England he was actually a geologist not a pastor not anything like that this this is a guy that's a geologist that said that this is a local flood this is not a worldwide flood but he's doing the same thing that you're doing no offense to you but he's taking science and 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 he's trying to uh, filter the Bible through science instead of taking science and filtering it through the Bible what happens is this happens a lot but it's taking away the judgment of God. Every thought of every human being on the entire earth was evil continuously. Also, the, the Genesis 6 thing happened, which was the DNA getting construed. That's why it says that, that the perfect generation that you're talking about is genealogy of, of, of Noah. That means he had perfect genealogy. He didn't have the uh, contorted DNA from the, the fallen angels in Genesis 6. So it's okay for you to believe it's a local flood, but it doesn't make sense when you read the Bible word for word. And also that promise that God makes, it doesn't make sense because there's he floods the earth all the time. So what is the promise then? What is, what is the promise for you in your local flood model that God's not going to flood the earth again, the land again? He floods the land all the time. So no, what promise not, is he no, holding? Not like Noah's flood, not the entire land of the garden. He hasn't done that <laughs> since. So There's just no because, wording just, there of for course, the garden, though. Oh, it's just the land. But you're interpreting that as... So I, I'm going to continue to interpret it properly, in my view, as the land. Okay. And you're going right. to continue to interpret it as the entire earth, even though there's no scientific evidence. All I'm doing is gathering evidence, whether it's from the science or from the Bible. I'm gathering all the evidence and doing my best to draw the accurate conclusion on that. Very honestly, just like you are. And we are... And every time we read the Bible... Every word must be interpreted, whether it's coming from me or from you or from anybody. So you're always going to be given your interpretation. I'm going to give mine, and everybody else is going to give theirs. That's why there's 20,000 different denominations of professing Christians and one truth. So I, I'm understanding more and more about the flat earth and how you think. It makes it's making more sense. Maybe I can devise a better presentation you know, going oh, forward. You do, you do fine. It's not that. I, I just... I just, uh, yeah, I think you do fine presenting what you believe, and I think people, they, they got it. I just, to, to everybody that's Terrell's um, side, like when, when I'm talking here, guys, I'm not, I'm not trying to deceive. I'm not trying to NASA anybody. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to beguile anybody. Um, what I do is I read the Bible word for word, and then that's, that's what I make it be, you know, and that's, that's all I do. So if anybody has an issue with it, I mean, leave a comment and let me know what, what I'm doing wrong. But I'm really just trying to read the Bible and uh, for what it is. And I'm not saying, hey, I'm right. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And I think the Bible is right. I don't think that we should ever try to take um, 
Because so here's the thing. We know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities of evil. So it's always God versus the devil. And the devil is here to deceive. So when you go into the scientific uh, realm, what you try, what you start seeing, which I know that you understand this, uh, Terrell, you start seeing an inverted version of, of things that the Bible says. Inverted as in evolution, trying to say that things become you know, macro evolution change from, you know, be becoming a, a, an amoeba to becoming a human. That's not what the Bible says. Everything comes after its kind. The Big Bang Theory is millions, billions upon billions of years. What does the Bible say? 6,600 from Adam, right? And then we, you know, around there. I'm not saying exactly. Um, and then what does uh, the cosmology say in, you know, is, is that the stars came first, the sun came first, and then the earth. Now, can I ask you a question, Terrell? When it comes to the cosmology, what came first uh, on, on the what's the true cosmology of, of this uh, realm? What came first? Earth. Genesis okay, 1 1. Because the Bible says it, right? Yeah. But it, everything was one. Everything in this universe was one thing. And the, the, the hosts that were on there were living souls, kind of like Adam of Genesis 2 7. Nobody was born. God made everybody. And, er, and nobody died for ages. So there's a. Ecclesiastes 1 started 9. You know, there were ages that existed before us. Ages, multiple ages that existed before us. And Ephesians 2, um, 4 through 7, then Paul talks about the ages to come. That we're going to be here a long time. There's ages before us and there's ages after us. So this notion of 6,000 years, um, that the world's been around, this young earth thing, absolutely is not going to work. So when were the dinosaurs? There's plenty of bones around. I'm looking at the Grand Canyon and all these layers, right? I'm looking at all these layers of sediment that the ocean was there and then not the ocean and then the ocean. You're talking about millions and millions and millions. That's why, the flood. That's why you're seeing that because the flood came through. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the creation of the Grand Canyon. I'm talking about the layers, the sediment. The different layers came over time. So the, all that was dust and it came down. Then it packed on top of another layer, another layer, another layer. It takes a long time to do that. And then, the yeah, okay, so you want to say the flood created it in one time how are you going to wear down all that rock in one event it's not going to happen it takes a long time what about the fountains of the great being broken water coming from below water coming from above this is a massive massive thing you know so, yeah anyways, so, absolutely we have, we i agree kind of went over the, the the local flood uh and and the flood i think people can read the bible read genesis uh chapter six through nine you're going to be able to see what i'm talking about that um you know it's a it's a newer theory from like the 1800s or something. It came from a guy Charles Lytle, which is Charles Lytle, which is not even a, a um, not even a minister or pastor or anything like that. And he doesn't even believe in God. He's a theist, so he believes there's a God. But he comes in, he, he poisons the well like Satan always does, and it makes people think, okay, well the flood was local. Which I, there's not a lot of people that I think that invoke that, but some people do. And you know what? You have every right to interpret the Bible how you feel. But um, I, I just think that we should read the Bible for what it is, understand the grand scheme of things, read it in context, read it like, you know, when you hear words like all and every and all and every through the entire Genesis, you know, Genesis 6 through 9. And also um, Genesis 6, 4. If you're listening to this right now, Terrell, on your side, which I think maybe maybe you do invoke this, I'm not sure. Read that passage and find out what sons of God are in the Bible. In the Old Testament, sons of God are always angels, okay? In the New Testament, we become sons of God, right? Because we get adopted in. But sons of God is a direct creation of God. So understand that. So that's an angel, and that's Adam. That's the two direct creations of God. So we have uh, Genesis 6 is actually fallen angels coming down, shedding their Oketarian, which is their heavenly body, and having sex with women and Nephilim being born. That's why I believe the flood had to be invoked. It was to, to take out the Nephilim, which are earthborn. They're not made in God's image. They have no salvation. And uh, that's what I believe. You guys need to read that passage and, and study it. What do you think, Terrell, about Genesis 6? Since we're, we're getting close to the end, I think we had a, a, a fruitful discussion. Okay. What's your thoughts on Genesis 6? I'd love to hear that. Okay. So these are sons of God, and they're, they are created in God's image, too. It's just... You need to have an understanding of what that means, spirit, blood, and water. In other words, they have a spirit, soul, and a body. Okay. And see, so whenever you get to, uh, like David, Psalms 82, 6. So you are gods and sons of the living God. So from the infinite realm, that's we all come from there. We're all sons of God in God's infinite realm. And we are incarnate here. We're incarnate in heaven. We're fighting with Michael the archangel against the dragon right now. 
some of us are fighting with the dragon and don't know it. They're deceived. Okay. And so also we're here on the earth and we're doing things already done. Ecclesiastes 1. We're doing things already done. This is on earth as it is in heaven as it is in God's infinite realm. So they are the, the ones you're referring to, the Nephilim, they're sons of God too in God's infinite realm. The thing is they're on Satan's side. We're on God's side. But we are here to be judged, Hebrews 9, 27, either as perpetrators in the Satanic Rebellion or as victims in the Satanic Rebellion. So that's why we suffer here, because we suffered in God's infinite realm, the Satanic Rebellion. They were destroying us. So the darkness, Ephesians 6, 12, that you're referring to, the principalities, the dominions of this darkness, that's the same darkness of Genesis 1, 2, the darkness upon the face of the deep. That's the feature and characteristic of this evil age. That we're in right now. There's a battle that's going on. Michael the Archangel and the Dragon. It's frozen motionless, by the way. Almost infinite realm. Those bodies are like constellations from our perspective here on the earth. And we're redoing things that are already done. So those Nephilim that you're referring to, they had to be destroyed out of the land of the garden. They were infiltrating the seed that was in the land of the garden. That's where the seed was. So obviously that's where they would be attacking them. And then they had to be taken out. That's what the flood was for. So... Yeah. I mean, the, so, yeah. You, and are you in, do you invoke that there fallen angels coming down and having sex with human women? It was. The uh, the sign in the rainbow you talked about? So here's the deal with that. So green was not in the rainbow. There were six colors in the rainbow previous. Then the that allowed that the, the green is the barrier. It's not used by the plants, by the way. It's the barrier that was placed. So whenever Noah before this covenant was made when he looked at the rainbow, he saw six colors. That was normal, like carbon, six, the number six throughout everything. Now it's seven because God, the Lord God changed it. So the Nephilim could come through from the next realm because of the light, the features of the light, even the sunlight. But whenever the Lord God changed the sign in the rainbow to the green, now those spiritual beings cannot, they can no longer come through the veil and to be with women. So that's part of the covenant. That doesn't happen anymore like it did previous. Now, again, that's my, I've done this research for decades and looked at every nook and cranny. So it's well developed. It's likely not going to be changed my mind in debate, but you are sowing seeds. And if they are good, then they will grow in the fertile ground of my heart. That's the way this works. And you're, and you're also, you're sowing seeds too. You know, I, I think that, um, I think it was a fruitful conversation um you guys can go back read read genesis 6 through 9 please i would love for you guys to read that um and um i think you know you guys could decide and this is not this is more of a discussion right here this is not even like really a debate we're kind of just uh exchanging ideas i think last time it was more of a debate this time we're just kind of you know we're just going through things so i think it was fun it was also it was awesome um one thing also i want to bring up uh stars in the bible guys if you look up stars in the bible um you know uh, sometimes they're referred to as angels. Sometimes they're referred to as stars. You know, like it says, I created the moon, sun, and the stars also. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, Ecclesiastes 1.5, it talks about sun ariseth and sun goeth down. If you click that, it actually means sun going forth, which is away, and sun coming forth. So, And even if it was the sun rising, that'd be something that doesn't happen in the heliocentric model. But I think that's interesting. Um, and, you know, if you guys could just go through everything that we talked about, uh, look at the, the Hebrew cosmology as, a, as opposed to the scientific cosmology. And I think what uh, Terrell is doing um, is he's he's studying the science and studying the Bible. And, um, you know, that's just the way that he rolls, you know. So that's something that you guys could do if you want to if you guys choose to do that. Um, if you want to just, you know, stick with the Bible and then only filter uh, the science through the Bible, I think, uh, I think you will find out that there's, there's a, there's an inverted version of what, uh, you know, they say as opposed to what the Bible says, but yeah, thank you for this discussion, brother. I had a good time with you. It was fun to Do you have any questions for me before we get off? Uh, no, I think we've covered this topic very well and to the best of our ability, based on our understanding of the other's position, it, it really, you're presenting your views debate is the presentation of opposing views and we do have that and we can continue to have that absolutely fine we both still worship god and god yeah. is christ is in in, in uh, incarnate in our hearts and we are looking at all the evidence around us whether it's scripture where science and making the judgment 
to the best of our ability and trying to do our best to help others, you know, to see the same. So I appreciate yeah. you and uh, your efforts and I appreciate the ability to come here and share. And next time we'll talk about the nine eleven inside job. Yes, which would be awesome. Uh, so March 30th, right? That's what, that's when you're going to come on. Yes. Seven, 7 a.m. on the nine eleven topic schedules, right? For me. <laughs> it's 5 a.m. for you. Yep. So I'll, uh, all right, let's do it. All right. So everybody that's listening, we appreciate go, uh, go to just, you could actually just go to YouTube to put in Terrell Cross and, uh, you'll be able to pull up his kick, YouTube. Kick, you mind if I have just a second and I can, if you share my, if I share my screen, just give me one, even just one minute, I'll share my screen. Okay, cool. He came up. Okay. And I'll close this and you can see, you know, what my screen is. That's been my desktop for forever. And then I wanted to pull up just my website, my name Terrell zero three dot com. This is my website right here. You see, there's a scripture section right here. Two Gospels of the New Testament, two churches, four baptisms. This is according to the structure of my book, The Mystery Explained. You can get a signed copy of my book right here. Click right here. You can get a signed copy, international or local. This is what it looks like. And whenever you subscribe, just $25 a year for a Mystery Report newsletter subscription, then you get access to all the newsletters going back to 2019 in a Dropbox folder. And you get a free copy of my book, the EPUB version, attached to your notification email. Then you get your the extended version and my 9-11 book attached. You might want to get your hands on that 9-11 book before our debate. Whenever you get your nano silver, strengthen your immune system, build your immune system up, and... Um, I think that's uh you subscribe down below, get your nano silver, watch the presentation. This lady will tell you all about it and the miracles. I have other interviews if you want to check it out, biological weapon stuff. Won't go into that too much. And then check me out on over on Substack. This is uh some of the articles that you'll see, my interviews, and you guys can check me out at terrell.substack.com. And that's it. Appreciate you letting me do some little selfless, shameful promotion. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, uh, that's that's how Terrell, you know, uh, he actually has a book, uh, Mystery Explained. You know, he makes a living like that. So if you guys could purchase his book, I would definitely appreciate that. You know, I mean, he comes on. I don't pay him to come on. He doesn't pay me to come on. It's just really just a uh, – it's, it's him taking his time out to come on and, and speak to us here. And, uh, you know, we appreciate that for sure. So – Check out his uh, Substack. Check out his book. He has some amazing stuff. And on March 30th, we're going to be going over 9-11 is the inside job, which is really, really going to be an interesting episode. So please tune into that on both sides. Everybody on Terrell's side, we love you. We appreciate you. If you want to, if you want to subscribe to me, it's Josh Monday Music and Podcast. And we have all different studies and uh, conspiracies, Christian and conspiracies. We take a conspiracy show how it relates to the Bible. Check us out. Everybody on my side, we appreciate you guys listening. We love you. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for, for tuning in. So um, please subscribe to my YouTube and, and also give us a five-star review. And also Terrell, subscribe to his YouTube, Terrell Croft. Um, all right, we'll end this in prayer. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are so amazing for letting us have this uh, you know this discussion. Um, I just want to say, anybody, hopefully we planted seeds, Lord. If you could, please uh, water those seeds with the word, help people get closer to the word of God. I think it's uh, you know, your word, your Bible, I, I really, th I take it literally like, you know, Lord, and I just love it so much. I think it comes alive. Uh, we appreciate all the tools you give us to be able to study the Bible, the lexicons, the, uh, you know, the strong concordance, and for us to be able to understand, you know, what, what you were trying to convey to Moses, to Isaiah, to uh, Ezekiel, to, uh, you know, to all these different prophets you spoke to Moses, you know, you spoke to him face to face, Lord, I just really appreciate uh, everything you do for us. That's, that's the, I love the food, the water that we get to eat, um, the, the water we get to drink, you know, we're not in, in war right now. Um, but there is countries in war right now. We want to pray for, uh, uh, pray for Palestine and also pray for Israel and also pray for Russia. And I want to also pray for, um, for, um, uh, I don't know why it's not coming to my head. Uh, Russia is going against uh, Ukraine. Ukraine. So I just want to say, Lord, I want to pray for both sides, all sides of the wars. Please let peace happen. Uh, and uh, if you could supernaturally uh, come in and get involved. And I know there's going to be wars and rumors of war in the end times. And if this is striking the end times and it's going to happen, I know it's your will. So let it be done. But I just want to see if you could put a, a order of protection over the innocent that are getting slayed and killed 
for these wars. I, I was in, you know, I was deployed in the military. Um, uh, you know, uh, we, we get to see things and stuff that, that happens. And, you know, and, and I just want to say, Lord, please protect the, the, the soldiers' families and also protect the families from the soldiers. Because I think it, a lot of stuff is happening, Lord. That is, uh, it just it's tearing tearing people's hearts up, and it's making people do do crazy things, like light themselves on fire and all this stuff, Lord. I mean, we don't need to go that far. We just need to see if you could, you know, help these demonic, evil Luciferians see the light and and come to you and take take your advice and not Satan's advice, Lord. So please help us with that. I love you so much, Lord, and we appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for this fruitful discussion, Terrell. Uh, I love you, brother. And I really appreciate everything you do, man. And everybody, if you could please subscribe and leave us a five-star review. God bless you. Recording stopped. So I know that yours is still running, Terrell. Yeah, very good. And we're set up for the 30th. And yeah. just like we did just now. I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> yep, you'll be there. I'm going to send you an email day ahead just to make sure. Yes, and yes. And then yes. I'll, I'll be up and, and ready to roll with you. Appreciate you very, well, very much. Yeah, Terrell, uh, thank you, you know, and everybody on Terrell's side. Much love to you. Appreciate you listening. And, you know, we're, we're going to we're gonna do a, a great show for you guys on 9-11. It will not be a debate. It'll be a presentation on his side. And then I'll have also evidence that I've studied, too. And I think that you know what you're talking about, Terrell. So it'll be great. Thank you, brother. You're very, very welcome. You have a great day. You, too. God bless everybody that's listening. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and end the show. Okay. God bless you. Okay. Okay, so a little, uh, um, a few of my comments on this debate, and that's really what it is, pre presentation of opposing views, and you can see Josh has a good heart. He, he, he really, he presents his, his case, he, in excluding science, he wants to, to um, use God's word in order to prove, to make a point that is about the physical universe, and for me, that seems like that's extremely difficult to do. Like when he asked me to go to a verse to prove it's round, that's not what God's word's for, in in my view. So um, one thing that I did notice is that I went through at the beginning and made my case, brought everybody up to speed. Are you ready for for activation day? And then. The time zones, there was some debate about that, the time zones. And then, you know, showing the actual map, the diameter of the Earth, I mean, the circumference of the Earth, 24,000 miles, 1,000 miles per hour, it all works out. And then going through the, the, the sunrise and sunset, every single sunrise and sunset was between 6.30 and 7. Every one of them. This is where I'm at. This is where it is in Denver. Okay, so this works perfectly. Hawaii, you go all the way around, Japan, Russia, all the way around the Earth, Bermuda, to make a full circle, every single one of them between 6.30 and 7. And because the Earth is turning. And so that explains everything for me perfectly. So I took a little bit of time in explaining, you know, and going through these links and everything, and the did not there was no uh, counter arguments coming from Josh and that in, in any of these directions from any of these directions. So how is this true on a flat planet? Then um, this the amount of time that it takes light to get from the sun to here that's a known fact. Eight minutes. Magnetic portal connections connect and disconnect every eight minutes because of the it's it's associated with the time it takes light to travel that distance and so i didn't get any pushback and then showing the angles of the earth at the solstice equinox so everything that i'm sharing is supported by everything else that i'm sharing here and josh said that i was doing gymnastics but I, am i doing gymnastics if if this is the highest point on the planet this person standing there and you can see 220 miles away. If it's a flat earth, how come you can only see 220 miles? Should be able to see a lot further. And then there's a formula and it, it works for everywhere on the world because it's round. And so 
I didn't get the pushback. And, you know, there is a satellite up in space. It's not outside the magnetosphere. They're protected inside the magnetosphere. I do not believe that anybody can go outside Earth's magnetosphere and survive. Give me any evidence that shows that they can. There's not any on the whole planet. I've looked. So going around the world, you get back to where you started. You know, Magellan proved that. Went around the Earth in a ship. Didn't run into any ice. We didn't really get into that part. So seems to me we're not going to go back over this topic. I hope that it is my goal was to try to wrap it up so we don't have to come back down this path again. To me, it's obvious that the world is round. I look through a telescope and see Mars is round and everything's rotating on its axis, even the sun. So we shouldn't have to come back here again. And um, I already told you guys, you, you know where to subscribe. You know where to get your nanosilver. Shipping is on is tomorrow on Friday. And I'm about to make the full Earth Change Report now. And then there's another, I have another interview with Cliff Stephen at 6 p.m. this evening. It's a Zoom just like this one. And you're noticing that these videos cannot be uploaded to Brighteon because it's not in this, it's a small screen format. It's a whole full screen. This will upload everywhere else in the world, to Rumble, to BitChute, to Odyssey. It just will not, and YouTube. It just will not work at Brighteon. They have strict limitations on the size and if I'm going to share my whole desktop which I have to do during zoom then that's my apologies for that and that's it that's the uh, giant debate with Josh and I'm, now I'm rushed today I'm going to be behind and my reports going to come out a little bit later and I'm gonna be rushed to be done before the interview as my apologies if I'm a little bit short with you today whenever you write to me and I will um, Answer everybody's emails just as just as fast as possible while getting all my work done for this busy Thursday. So that's that's the um, end of the debate. Appreciate your support very very much. Get more information right here at terrell 3com and I'll see you on the next Black Star Update report.